I'm Lauren with IndoorGardening.com and today we're going to talk about houseplant pests. Houseplant pests can be incredibly intimidating. You will hear horror stories about how a pest came in on a plant and it took out an entire collection. It can be a very, very scary concept, but in reality, when you're dealing with pests and long-term plant parents learn this over time, it is not an execution of your plants just because you get a pest. It does not mean that you're a terrible plant parent. It does not mean that you did anything wrong at all. Plant pests are just something that's natural and part of life. Today, we're gonna go over the four most common plant pests and how to take care of them. So the first pest that we wanna talk about gets the absolute most hate and that is spider mites. You will see these little teeny tiny white or red spider or tick looking creatures and they'll be crawling all over your plants. They'll be really, really tiny. You might even need a magnifying glass to see these bugs, but what you will start to see when they have fully matured and started to take over your plant, this is when there is a big colony, not just one or two on here. You'll start to see a fine webbing at the very cracks and crevices of your plants. You'll start to see the backs of foliage, especially will start to have little teeny tiny pinprick spots on it. This is where the spider mites are actually eating your plant and doing damage. They want to eat your foliage. Another thing that you may notice if you have spider mites is that new foliage dies off and disappears really quickly. It just dries out, dies off. It might even have some of that webbing on it. That's because spider mites love the new foliage the absolute best. It is their favorite snack. Spider mites can live for quite a while. They can lay their eggs on the underside of the leaves and then it takes a very long time, sometimes weeks at a time for you to notice that there is spider mites on your plant. You can't see them in their little baby state. So once they get big enough and mature enough and there's enough of them is when you're probably going to notice, which is why we recommend pre-treating for pests just in case. These little guys can float through a window, they can come in on your clothes, they can come in on your shoes, they can come in on other plants. They just exist. Spider mites are a nightmare because they are tricky to get rid of. You have to be wiping down the foliage, you have to make sure that you're getting those cracks and crevices. Neem oil is not very effective on spider mites unless you completely cover the entire plant all the time. Generally, it's best to completely rinse out the plant. You can change the soil if you want. Spider mites do not live in the soil. They prefer to stay on the foliage, but they will crawl around. So you want to clean off the area that your plant was at. You want to make sure you're cleaning up the floor, wiping down any tables that your plant was on. You want to wipe down the outside and inside of the pot as well. Systemics will not work on spider mites. So if you have a systemic in your plant, make sure that you're still checking for spider mites. It works for all of the other pests, but spider mites are immune, unfortunately. There are two different ways that you can deal with spider mites. You can use the water and rinsing method. You're just gonna have to do that on a regular, and then you can also spray them down with insecticidal soap. This will kill any pests that are on there. It will kill good bugs and bad bugs that are on your plants and in your soil. Another thing that you can do if you don't wanna kill all of the good bugs in your soil is buy buy beneficial bugs that are going to end up eating those spider mites for you. It used to be that buying beneficial bugs was a little bit more pricey than buying the insecticidal soap and the treatments for spider mites, but now they're about the same price depending on where you go. So it's just whatever method is going to work best for you. If you don't have a problem with having good bugs on your plant, then I definitely recommend the predatory bugs that are gonna go after them and take care of them for you. That way you don't have to stress about it. It's just hanging a little tiny packet and there'll be microscopic bugs battling each other on your plants. And then your plants will be healthy. It's very, very simple and a lot less stress than having to constantly wipe down your plants for months. Speaking of having to wipe down plants for months, thrips is the next worst one. And honestly, between spider mites and thrips, it depends on the plant parent that you're talking to, which one is worse. Thrips tend to be a nightmare because they're these little teeny tiny skinny black bugs that they don't need a male and a female to reproduce and lay a bunch of eggs. The female can do it all by herself. And they lay their eggs inside the foliage of your plant. 
So you can kill all of the adult thrips on your plant. And then in another two to 14 days, you can have up to 300 eggs hatching all over your plants and their larva is microscopic. You cannot see this larva. You will not see these pests until they are almost mature or fully mature. They are very, very tiny, tiny bugs. Fortunately though, thrips can be taken out by insecticidal soap or preventative washing. If you are washing your plant every single day or every couple of days, and as soon as the thrip larva hatches, it's washed away, they will not grow into mature adults and they will not be able to eat your plant. But if you just spray down your plant one time with insecticidal soap and see that all of the thrips are gone, please do not fall for it because they are definitely still there. They have already laid their eggs and that plant will be getting thrips again. Definitely want to make sure that you are quarantining all the plants that could possibly have pests away from your other plants. Thrips can fly slightly as well so they can spread from one plant to another over short distances and they can actually land on other plants, lay those eggs, and then you won't even notice that they were there because you only focused on the one that was heavily infested. So definitely treat all of the plants that were touching each other when you find one plant with thrips because you probably have a lot of plants that have thrips, unfortunately. It can take two to three months of continual watching to get rid of these thrips over time. They can be gotten rid of though, especially if you treat your plants with a systemic. It can take up to three weeks for your plants to absorb a systemic, which is essentially an insecticide. Your plant soaks it up and it makes your plant toxic and poisonous to these pests that are eating it. Unfortunately, it can also poison healthy beneficial bugs that are in the soil as well. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Again, you can use those beneficial bugs. You don't have to resort to the chemicals but the chemicals are the easiest and fastest way to get rid of them. Because it can take three weeks for the systemic to be absorbed into your plant, we recommend that you treat your plant every three to five days with an insecticidal soap, so that way if there are any larvae or any thrips that are popping up on your plant, they are being taken out and they're not laying more eggs and you won't have a longer period of time. It will also prevent the plant from declining until the systemic is soaked up and able to keep your plant safe. Next up, we have mealybugs. Mealybugs are these little teeny tiny, fluffy, cottony little crustacean critters. They're actually called bugs, but they're really in the crustacean family. And they're just gonna run around and they're gonna eat your little plants. They wanna suck all the juices from your plants. Mealybugs also work in tandem with ants. So if you find ants in a plant pot, expect to find mealies as well and make sure you're treating for them too. Mealybugs will actually secrete little sap after they're done eating your plant. They'll go ahead and suck it and then they'll drop these little balls of sap there for the ants and the ants really, really love that. So they're kind of in synchronicity and if you see one, generally there's going to be the other one. Hoya especially are susceptible to mealybugs, so that's something to definitely keep in mind. Mealybugs are pretty easy to get rid of though. You'll end up seeing these white, fluffy, cottony um, areas. It almost looks like a little spider sack was made, but not really. And they're usually tucked on the stems or under the leaves. They're not generally just sitting on top of your foliage. You might find a mealybug or two crawling around, but most of the time they're gonna be kind of tucked in under in nooks and crevices. You just wanna wash them off and then spray it down with an insecticidal soap. They're very, very easy to get rid of. This last one is not really a plant pest per se because they do not really damage plants. It's a common misconception, fungus gnats. They fly around, they're little black fruit fly looking guys and they just fly around your room. They usually end up in your coffee or in your face or flying up your nose. They're very annoying. Um, and then they can be taken out by sticky traps and just letting your pots dry out. What these fungus gnats want to eat is all of the fungus and the mold spores that are growing in your pots. So if you just let your pots dry out quite a bit, you're not going to have the fungus gnat issue. They'll lay eggs in your soil and then they will sprout from there and they'll just eat all the little fungus in there. which it doesn't harm your plant. They don't eat your plant. They're just annoying for plant parents. And if you are overwatering your plants to the point that fungus gnats are very prominent throughout your collection, then you may be having some other issues and it may seem like your plant is declining, but it's not the fungus gnats that are killing your plant. It is the overwatering issues that are killing your plant. They are by far the easiest out of all of these pests to get rid of and they definitely won't be harming your plant. They're just a sign of a bigger issue that needs to be taken care of. 
If you let your plants dry out and you still have fungus gnats flying around, you can get things like catchy, which is like a little bug catcher. Um, you can also get these little yellow sticky traps. They will draw in these fungus gnats and they will get stuck to them and that will take care of them as well. You don't have to dump neem oil or hydrogen peroxide or any of that stuff in your plant. A lot of those things can have other effects on your plant and won't even kill the fungus gnats. Just let your plants dry out. Use a systemic if you feel it's necessary. Um, pay attention to what your plants are doing and use sticky traps if you need to. The idea of pests on our plants, little creepy buggies crawling on our plants is really scary and terrifying, but hopefully this demystified them a little bit for you. Hopefully this made them a little less scary. Knowledge is power. Your plants are not going to die if you stay on top of your plants. Every single plant parent out there has a pest on a plant somewhere in their home. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't make you a bad plant parent. It just makes you like all the rest of the plant parents. If you haven't gotten a plant pest yet, don't worry, you probably will, but now you're armed with all of the knowledge to be able to take care of that. You won't have any issues. You'll be able to confidently get rid of whatever pest you come across and have a happy, healthy plant collection. Be sure to check out indoorgardening.com for more information. We are always happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.